It's time for the Chips and Salsa Show. The only show about Latinos for Latinos. And did we mention Latinos? It's the Latissima. Latinos come in all flavors, shapes, and sizes. You don't have to be Latino to enjoy Chips and Salsa. Super low, Chips and Salsa. What is up, everybody? Zeke Rodriguez here with the Chips and Salsa Show in New Mexico. As always, with the amazing Alice. Hola, walking on. Today we have a great guest. We have our special guest, Amy Barella, who is also actually the first vice chair of the New Mexico GOP, New Mexico Republican Party. She's also the county commissioner in Otero County, and she's vying for the new chair of the Republican Party of New Mexico. So we're very honored to have her on today. We've worked closely in the past. She, I can, I can hang out here with three hours, three hours with her. <laughs> but it's, thank you for coming on, Amy. Thank you for having me today. We really appreciate you. I'm excited. Yeah, I I was trying to prepare myself all the way over. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I know I know you guys are just going to hold my feet to the fire, so I, I had to get my mind in the right set. Probably. It's going to be a great Probably. show. Probably. Before we do, though, I just want to mention real quick, because last week, and I'm sorry you guys didn't make it, yeah. Canada came. Right. Things are busy, I understand that. But as you all know, that we followed our show, we had an emergency pro-life dinner at my parish, St. Genevieve's Catholic Church, and that was Southwest Coalition put it together. And our good friend Maida Rodriguez, who's from Arizona, who was a Planned Parenthood whistleblower, was the main speaker. And it was great. It was a full house. Um, and one thing I just want to mention, because we'll put the information down here. One of the things that the Southwest Coalition is doing, and the reason for the dinner was, because our illustrious governor has is going to devote $10 million dollars for an abortion clinic up there in Loman, right across from Mountain View Hospital. And that's what this is about. This is to fight that that uh, awful thing. I don't even want to, even want to say abortion clinic. But what we're going to do, Southwest Coalition gave everybody there 10 printed letters, and we're going to write, basically, and we're already ready to rock, to the construction company to say, please don't help these guys. Don't help these guys because we oppose it, and it's going to be a very powerful campaign. So I just wanted to mention that. If you made it, thank you very much for coming out. As you know, Maya did a great job. We had her on the show like a week before. And uh, I'm hoping she'll come back again. But please, we'll give you information. The Southwest Coalition, it does a lot of good stuff for pro life. So thank you for letting me take time to do that. And we can jump right in to talk to Amy. I'm, I'm so thrilled to meet you, Amy. I have heard just great stuff from your good friend Zeke. And I don't think you may him lately, do I, I slipped that 20 while we were outside. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you can't even joke about that in politics anymore. Right? I know. No, you definitely can't. But no, no, Amy's always been, I could jump in the political scene a couple of years ago, and, and I ran into Amy because obviously she's been uh, at the higher levels, the executive side of the State Republican Party since I got involved. And so she's taught me a lot. She's helped me. I ran for lieutenant governor. She helped me with that. Her and her husband, JP, great freaking guy too. And I just, you know, Excited to have her running for chair of the Republican Party here in New Mexico. I think we need it. I think it's time for the torch to be passed. Uh, Chairman Pierce did his did his thing. You know, he got us to where we are. And, and Amy is like for me the new generation of the Republican Party, and we need it because she was saying before, right before we started the show, that we're purple state officially now, right? We are officially purple, and yeah, and and chair, uh, Chairman Pierce got us there. You know, and and I I credit all of his, uh, everything he's taught me to my leadership skills, no doubt. And, you know, I hope by with uh, me running as chair, I can, can continue that on. But I'm also a little bit more of a grassroots organizer, and I believe in the people and, and their process and direction and all that. And I think that's just the difference that I can bring as the state chair to make sure we empower our counties, to make sure we give them the knowledge they need and, and build them up, because it's going to take the counties to be able to absolutely flip this state yeah, a lot of organization is needed. Why don't you tell the audience, take a couple minutes and give them your little bio because I was excited to learn that you um, are from New Mexico. You're not someone that, you know, you moved here two years ago and who? So no. Give me a little bio. I am born and raised in Otero County, New Mexico. And um, I, when I ran for county commission is when I realized that I actually never left my district, my county commission district. I've always lived there, except for the summers when I used to go swimming with my grandma and stay there all summer. Oh. That's the only time, you know. That's <laughs> but, awesome. but um, yeah, I believe in New Mexico. Um, my husband and I own a couple of businesses, and that's kind of what opened the door for me to get involved in politics. My family was involved in politics, you know, and my aunt showed up on my 18th birthday, pulled me out of, out of uh, the high school uh, classroom and into the hallway and registered me to vote. 
you know, and I'm just filling it out, and she's telling me how, what party I need to be, and all that. I had no idea. And, so did and then you register Republican? I did. I've been 100% Republican. I can honestly say I didn't have a clue when I filled it out the first time what that meant, but I learned very quickly, and especially being a business owner. Um, you you, you kind of jump into where things lie, regulations and taxes and all of that, and what's needed when you're a business owner, but uh, that's all I was. I was a mom involved in PTA, a business owner, and then our industry started getting attacked. And so I started becoming a little more uh, ambunctious about my comments in public and, and going to public meetings. And, and that is um, when I guess I got recognized and they said, hey, we need you involved in the party. And, and they recruited me by saying, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> we, just need, we just need you to fill the seat. Okay, that, and I use that same, I use that same line today. Does you know, still work? When I, and when I recruit people, I'm like, you don't wow. have to do anything. We just need you to show up. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is like that. They're yeah. just in a warm body. You <laughs> just, know? Get, we'll just get them in the door, and then we'll, we'll put them You're to work. Man. That's right. The fish line and hook, right? <laughs> and then they become but, excited. Yes. I'm ecstatic to know that my New Mexico, who does one race here, just came back a couple years ago, uh, is turning purple. It is. I was looking at the Pinon Post. I was looking at the Pinion Post that was saying how much tighter that the races are. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am about that. Uh, I know you're giving a lot of credit to the state party too, but do you think people are finally waking up? Are we doing a better job? What do you think? Well, the decisions being made by the current administration is definitely helping. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to take all the credit for the party because, you know, when you start affecting people's pocketbooks, you know, they start paying attention. And so you go and you borrow, buy, borrow soap, uh, I buy a package of soap, and um, it's double the price and, and half the size. You know, people, are, when everybody talks about the price, 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 well, what about the, the family package of potato chips? Is that the same size? But it's double the price. You know, are people paying attention to that kind of stuff? So it's kind of going both ways. And I don't fault the businesses at all. They're having to make these accommodations to be able to stay in business. You know, but I do fault the regulations, the administration of what they are doing um, and forcing this. And what's going to happen is that it's not going to go back. Everybody says, we'll fix the economy, we'll fix the economy. It's much harder to fix it once we're there. And I just don't see our prices, can they get better? Yes, they can get better. Less res regulations, you know, less requirements on the business owner. If you don't make it a requirement, businesses will automatically grow into, you know, giving raises and, and regulating themselves and all that. That's called competition supply and demand we automatically do that we don't have to be forced by the governor to do those kind of things and so um, I think when uh, people see the light when they're you know tax-free weekend I am so curious to know how much money was spent in New Mexico for tax-free weekend who had that extra money to go and buy I don't know a week's worth of clothes for your kids yeah or two weeks worth of clothes I mean what does that what does that mean two pairs of shoes um, five pairs of jeans a couple of slacks what is that two thousand dollars now At least. you think you think that affected people's pocketbooks it should have no nope. you know so so. when did the tax free that was last weekend. Last, last weekend was for week. school, yeah. Yeah, for, for school. schools. Oh, for school. Okay, yeah, for sorry, the schools to go out shopping. Thing, yeah. So yeah. no, you know, and that's so that's that directly affects our parents and our kids when they're when they're getting their school supplies and all that kind of stuff. So I'm curious how obviously we have a lot of people that take advantage of it, but what was the actual sales for the entire weekend? If we go back just one year, what is the difference? It's and a great so I'm question. curious to know, to know that. It's so a great question. We well, we should, yeah, well, it'll take, it's 30 days behind. So we'll know that day that in about 30 days. So I got kind of a complicated question. It's not bad, but it's good. I mean, because we're talking about the economy. And one thing I know is that we're about to go into a, what they call a stagflation. And we hadn't seen that since the late 70s. And there's really, so once you go in certain parts of inflation, just in general, you can't go back. Once it's up, you're not going back because the debt's there. It's all there. It's got to be paid for somehow one way or another. However, there is some hope. What I learned is that when you are in stagflation, the one way out of it is to produce, to manufacture, to work, to earn that money. To, to That's the only way you can counter the inflation. And New Mexico being, and I know you don't answer this question, that's what I'm asking you. New Mexico being so close to the border, we've all been reliant on, on migrant labor. 
do you see New Mexico in the future being able to be one of those high producing states or have we just lost everything to contracts gone out of country or? Everything, not just New Mexico. I mean, New Mexico is definitely affected, but the entire country. We don't have the industry, the development, and all of that. You know, when President Trump was president before, you know, um, I was hopeful. I'm in the automotive recycling business. Ah, yes. You know, and so we ship our recycled metals out of the country, period. There is not a manufacturer here in the United what? States to do that. And so the, the, it causes the cost to be lower, you know, and everything for the businesses. But well, President Trump wanted to have another recycling plant here in the United States. I was excited and I was willing to wait. I was willing to accept the lower prices while his plan was being developed. But the problem is, now that we have nothing in the United States that's going to accept this, and then we have President Trump, and he might on day one say, start building another facility. But what happens in four years when the Democrats come over and take over again? They're going to kill it. So what business owner wants to come and invest millions to be able to develop that kind of industry in the United States again when it might be at risk of failure in just four years again? It's too risky. So that is a reason why it is so hard to overcome. I mean, any kind of regulations like that that damage everything. Right. So that's, that's really well put, that, and how it kind of speaks to the larger picture of how we've exported all of our jobs overseas and how that's been hurting America. And so basically what you're saying is unless we do get Trump in there, and I like that you're not afraid to say the word Trump, um, unless we get him in there, at least get, getting on the, on the right direction in terms of manufacturing and production is concerned, the stagflation has no chance. We have no chance in beating that. Right. And, you know, I am not afraid of hiring a, a legalized immigrant, for sure. Right. We can't, uh, now that we have become dependent on the government's check, um, you know, we have so many Americans that don't want to go back to work. And so we're pretty much left to hire a legal immigrant if you want to be successful in business. I mean, we are struggling since COVID to be able to have a full staff. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to recover and have a full staff again. And used to, we'd have applicants every single day. If I have an applicant every two months, I'm ecstatic. Is that right? it, it, is, it is that bad. And it's because we're not teaching people how to, how to earn what they want. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a government handout state that, you know, that it, they expect, you know, I can't pay my rent, so, well, the state will subsidize it for me. You know, well, it's the state. It is you and me and you that are making those subsidies, and it's killing us. It is actually hurting us, and that is the reason why so many people are leaving New Mexico. I listen to books on tape because I'm constantly driving, and one of the points, so, here is Los Angeles or San Diego has a new proposal for their cost of living. So they say their average cost of living to live there is 97,000 a year. So if you are at that income rate where you come under that, that city wants to subsidize you to bring you up to 97,000 so that you match everybody. So, so the what whole does state it was. It was. The, I can't remember if it was Los Angeles or San Diego, but it is. That's oh, the. Yeah. That's the proposal that they're making within that city. So the so that, city would subsidize. That's right. The city wants to oh. subsidize, and the proposal is for 250 years to do this. So. So now. Now listen. So what are we doing? Not only are we not creating a competitive environment, we are. And we are doing an expectancy. So. We're going to have low services. I mean, why, if, you know, if I don't get my $2 tip today, that's okay because the state's going to give me, uh, you know, my money when it's all said and done. So we're not having a competitive environment that's going to uh, make your businesses better, make themselves better. Why do they want to go to school to become better? You know, they're, they're going to have their money handed to them, and that's what we are teaching. We are teaching that right here in New Mexico, too. So that's, no that's great, because that's basically universal basic income. And when you put it the way you did, that's basically very, it's dehumanizing, because we, our humanity is based on status. You know, guys want to get status to, to have money, to get a wife. Women want status so they can have the best uh, conditions for their offspring and survival. Mm -hmm. If you take away that competition, there's no incentive to maximize your human potential. And that and that's going to be just the whole world of hurt, right? Yes, and we're 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 teaching that you know even even today employees. Well, you know I've earned enough for the week. I've made rent. I don't need to go to work for the next week. 
you know, I, it is, is so communistic in that. right, you know, and, and it is part of the indoctrination because you don't want to appear like you're making more than anybody else because then you're better. You know, this is that whole critical race theory coming into yeah, it, yeah. you know, which has been um, just the actual purpose of critical race theory is being destroyed by these woke theories saying, you know, uh, you, you can't be part of the corporate America because then you're the bad guy, right. you know, and, and I'm not saying that these elites don't need to be doing something different, but what I am saying is everybody has the opportunity to go out and get a job and become something. And I mean absolutely everybody. When I got married at, at 18 years old, we couldn't even afford paper towels. So don't tell me that, that you know, that I should have been st stayed working, you know, as a cashier for the rest of my life. You, you are what you make yourself, and everybody has the same opportunity to do it. I don't care what color your skin is or where you came from. This goes so much further in that it's destroying the American way of life. Mm -hmm. So many people are uh, immigrate here because they know they have that opportunity. And things start in California. It's always the state to watch. I'm just so glad you mentioned this, because uh, I had no idea. I usually try to keep up with everything, but you can't. There's just too much going on. It is. This is pretty frightening. But the fact that you said also New Mexico is a very government-dependent dependent state, uh, it's, it's, it's scary to me. We are. We are. Um, I think the last time I looked, we're about 65% on, on government subsidies. I mean, how, how does the state expect to survive with that? I mean, you have to have growth in businesses. You have to have that entrepreneurial spirit. You have to be able to provide that in the schools. And we are turning our schools into a cookie-cutter teaching method. And so what does that mean? That you get out of school. Now, our kids don't even know how to balance a checkbook. What is a check? Do they even know how to write a check? I mean, this is, they're leaving as with a, Diploma and not knowing these basic skills. I know that I had to learn them in school. They certainly don't teach it now. And then the cookie, cookie cutter teaching method, you know, they're doing everything they can possibly do to not allow charter schools. What is a charter school? Just one more opportunity for a different type of education. You know, they're still going to provide math and reading and, 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 and all of this, but what else does that charter school have to author? offer? They're doing, um, you know, uh, technology and, and charter schools can actually develop per whatever uh, community they're in. So like um, over in Alamogordo, we're trying to get a charter school open that is geared towards having our kids graduate and graduate and be employed over at Holloman Air Force Base. You know, everything, drone flying and robot building and everything to do with this test track and all that, in addition to, now that's something the high school really doesn't offer. And, and everybody says, oh, it's a charter school. That's for the elite kids. No. That is for everybody to apply and be able to attend. You know, and I know that they will be fair in their choices and give somebody the opportunity they need. And who knows, somebody that, that might have parents in jail might be working at that test track in 20 years because of that opportunity. But we don't want that. We want to make sure it's cookie cutter. We don't even want to teach cursive in schools anymore. What does that do? Don't get me started. That's my talk. Uh, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, they expect, and look at Venezuela. That is a perfect example of cookie cutter. And, and that is something that we don't want our United States to be. Well, the fact that New Mexico were last or 51st in education, and, and to fight all these different things, you know, it's charter schools, single charter school, or homeschool. Now, it's not against the law in New Mexico. You can do that, but evidently it's not a very popular idea. It, it is not popular for the administration, but it's very popular amongst parents. Why is it popular amongst parents? Because you get to pick and choose what you're going to teach your kid. And then so, um, which might mean you get to teach your kid what the difference between a boy and a girl is. <laughs> Maybe. I don't think they teach that in schools anymore. Um, but that's just one thing you can do. What about, um, um, you know, cursive? And that's a huge one for me too. They don't teach cursive in schools, and I have no idea why they took that away, but those that have reading disabilities have to have 
cursive in their life because that is the way they learn with the flow, the spelling, and all of that. And, and it helps with their memorization to be in cursive. In print, it's separate letters and it's harder to learn. I don't know why that's so hard to get across to the schools. They don't want to recognize dyslexia or any kind of learning disabilities because they think everybody should be the same. Amy, I'm so glad you said that because uh, another candidate, uh, Elizabeth Winter, she has said that also. She says it's better for them to learn because of the flow. Yes. And people will, will argue with me. And, and one thing that I just knew about it, they, they were, I found this out in Arizona several years ago, kind of by accident, that they weren't doing that. So I called up the local school district and I finally I got to the principal. Nobody can answer my question. But long story short, the legislature there said, yes, you know what, schools, public schools, yeah, we need to teach cursive. We need to do it. We have an individual signature also, because now they say, there yeah, might be your printing might look a little more different. But the individuality, immediately I thought, well, they're trying to take away the individuality. That's right. Plus, if I go back, I have a, my, she was my grandmother's cousin. She was a, a nun. She lived in the United States. But I found a letter. She had this beautiful, perfect handwriting. But if, if you, you, know, you can't go back and read letters and history and things That's like right. That. Yeah, can thing. you even read the Constitution if you don't know cursive? So what is it, yeah, the, the deal on that? So the schools don't have to teach cursive? Right? No, they do not require that anymore. Not at all. And not at all. So yes. You need to please parents, call yes. the school, find out, and encourage that. Absolutely. That's just so simple. And if, you're prob if your kid has any kind of a problem learning how to read or whatever, it might be just as simple as teaching the cursive. Wow. Yep. A solution? You still need cursive. <laughs> No. So that, that's another reason why I really am, I'm enjoying having Amy on because, you know, once I got into politics, I was really into the national stuff, just like everybody else. You read, you watch the news, you, you learn about geopolitical, national, and then you really get to the brass tacks of what politics really is, and it's your local. It's your local. If you can't fix your own backyard, don't bother with the rest. You can't. And you've mastered that for New Mexico as far as you, as far as you could as a Republican, right? I mean, it's been a blue state, purple now, but for a very long time. So Amy knows, you know, she answers these really difficult questions. I remember not too long ago, we were because Alma Gordo's experienced such a ramp up in, in population, right, that they needed more schools. And you guys were having trouble finding a place to do schools. Like you just said right now, you guys are trying to get a charter school, and it's just been headache after headache with these schooling. And so that's a local issue. That's a big issue. And that speaks to all the other issues that you got to do with on your locality. Everybody's focused on national and Trump and Biden. It's like, no, man, you got to get involved with your local party, and you got to start solving these problems right now. Just go to a city commission meeting. Just sit in there and listen to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And you might be amazed. You know, don't, don't wait for the decisions to be made. Be a part of it. You have to make sure that your city commission, I mean, they have the ability to, to regulate you, tax you, give you ordinances. What, what is legal today might be illegal tomorrow. And if you're not involved, you don't have a voice. And even if you can't be there physically, a lot of these, like here in Las Cruces, they put them on YouTube. You can just go there and you can watch them over you know, later go watch or go listen to them. A lot of stuff I'm doing, doing multitasking or trying to, you can listen to yep. you, You're so light, you can learn so much. So when you tell people, you know, I'll tell people, oh, you're the counselor says, oh, no, Alice, that didn't happen. Yes, it did happen. Let me show That's you. Right. Go back and listen. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, we can, you know, um, as a county commissioner, I encourage people, please come to the meetings. And we're, we're open. Um, we allow people in the crowd to come up and introduce themselves and speak. We're not one of those county commissions or, or city commissions that you sit there and watch, shut up. Unheard you know, of. We believe, we believe in the people. And, and I can say that I've changed my mind based on the people's voice. Right. You know, you go in, and I try to do my research before going in, but what if I'm not asking the right people? What if I'm actually affecting somebody with my decision and they stand up and speak and I hear what I'm doing to them, I will change my mind, you know, because that's not the intent of being an elected official. And so that's why it is so important for people to listen and pay attention to what's going on so that those kind of may, whether with intent or within, without intent, be reflect of, it could change their day-to-day -day life. Well, it's clear to see that you understand what we the people mean. You know what? The public, you are serving. They're actually the boss. And you're smart enough to listen to what they're trying to say. I, and that is number one. And I actually learned that um, my very first, probably my first day as county chair. 
you know, um, and and learn, you know, representing just the Republicans at that time, you know, and and uh, an older gentleman, which was a really hardcore Republican, came up to me and he said, "That is just not the Republican way," you know, and I was like. Okay. I guess I need to learn what that is a little better because I don't know what you're talking about. But, <laughs> you know, but there is. And to me, that has evolved into listening to whatever group you're representing. And now, luckily, I'm representing the county, and I get to listen to every single faction and, and, and work with everybody. And it's a blessing when you open that. It's not about the party line. It's about making your community better, your state better, and your nation better. I just want to ask you real quick on this kind of same topic because I've been back two years and like we were talking before the show, a lot of New Mexicans and people I've reconnected with, they are conservative, but they are still registered Democrat. For whatever reasons, you know, they won't register Republican. How do we kind of change that mindset? And what's a good way to do that? The Democrat Party has left you. You know, we have very, we have I have many loyal friends to the Democrat Party. They were born that way. They I get the comment, uh, you know, my grandma, she would just turn over in a grave if she knew that I was changing parties or whatever. Is. Well, but you know what? Um, the Democrat Party has left you. It's not the same value system. Even even the same definition system that they use isn't isn't You know, look at the word woke. I, I made that reference earlier. So what does that mean? wokeness was developed you know in the early 80s and it was for the intent of being able to make uh, social matters known to the public now wokeness has evolved to where we use those social matters and we bully you into either shutting your mouth or just accepting that, that, that you are um, against Let's say, uh, let's go back to the corporate thing, the wokeness. They don't like the, the corporate advisors where those corporate people are going to build the houses for everybody, right? But they want you to feel bad for the corporate people to do that, and they attack them. So then what do we do? We don't build houses. And so it's, it's, it's now damaging. It's not what the purpose of it was. And we just allow it to continue, and they use it as a bully system. The bully is a key word. You're yeah. absolutely right. But it is still very hard, and I can understand that because when you just look and the media just shows you a lot of fighting factions and things like that, and it can be hard. So what I, I tried to be able to, if you can't change, you don't want to come to my party and you're a Republican, okay, but at least become an independent. At least mm -hmm. do that, and then, then we'll keep working on <laughs> it. Yeah, I always, I, I just, know. I always just go for it. Just please register yeah. Republican. Well, I'm have a call <laughs> yes. That's right. Just well, do it. Well, maybe yeah. not. You know, but but right now we don't have to worry about you changing parties. We need you to show up and vote. Just vote. We need you to vote, and we need you to show up and save our country because literally that is what it's going to take. We we have to get President Trump in there, without a doubt, without fail, and uh, I just can only imagine what we will have in more devastation if we don't. Because it's just going to continue the downward spiral. Amen to that. And so, like, with Amy, one of the main reasons I kind of was, like, really interested in meeting her and her husband, JP, it was even before I really got deeply involved in for Austin or anything, but I know Alamogordo now. I love Alamogordo now. I love Cloudcroft now. Those are, like, two of my favorite cities, if not the most favorite cities in all of New Mexico. And if you know the whole, the, we don't have to get too into it, but I think it's an important story. There was a time when Alamogordo was not so Republican. It was not so nice. The crime was a lot higher. It was a rough city. We used to call it Alamogordo hole, straight up. Because it was just rough. but And she was there through the transition of it going from where Las Cruces basically is now to where Alamo Gordo, I love going there. And so could you please speak to what it took or what you would recommend for other counties? Because we got Hidalgo's red, Deming, Luna's pretty much red, and it's we're coming up next basically. But Doniana's still so strong blue. But what do you think we can say to people besides voting, You know, just getting involved, going to county commission meetings? Like, What was the main thing that you could speak to that helped you guys get the Alamogordo to such a beautiful place where it is now? Awareness of what's going on with your city and county commissions, for sure, first and foremost. And then when you see those positions coming up, um, you know, we next year we have uh, city commission positions coming up. You know, and so what do you do? You kind of look around and who is paying attention but not really involved. 
who has the value system to be able to get in there and make those changes, you know, but not really saying anything. Approach them and ask. Have a conversation with those people and get them to run for office. I have recruited a couple of city commissioners that you would have never even dreamed of being on that council. And you know what? They're pretty dang good city wow. commissioners. And you've just got to reach outside the circle and, and say, you know, you don't believe in taxing. You don't believe in regulations. You, you know, you if a little more forgiving for that elderly gentleman that has weeds in their backyards, we'd get them help rather than punishment. That is the value system that we need, and we need to make sure that we're electing those people. And it takes certain people to go out and find them and recruit them, because it takes, if you know, it takes ten times for you to ask a woman to do anything, whether yeah. whether whether you're <laughs> no trying way. to get her to sell candles or run for city commission. A man, you have only have to ask two or three times. You know that theory, right? Does it depend if the woman's asking a man? Oh, I don't, I don't know that. No, you have to, because a woman is a logical thinker, and she'd be like, "Oh, I don't have time for that. I got I my kids. Say, I got this." <laughs> you know, and a man, you know, and a man's like, "Hey, I can do that job." You know, so, so you that makes, sense. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You're saying become a political talent scout, and essentially that's what you've done, and you're very successful. At it. It's hard. It's it's not easy. It's not easy recruiting. It's not easy finding people that are going to represent you. Have I found the wrong people? Yes. You know, sometimes I think to myself, man, I'm the one that put that person there. It's primary, I'm primary. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I totally regret it, you know, but it happens. Um, I try, you know, but you're, it, it, as long as we get a conservative voice, right. you know, over here in Las Cruces, you know, we, I would like to see a little bit more of a conservative city commission and, right. and county commission. And, you know, you spoke uh, with your uh, the abortion clinic coming up. You know, if you had a strong city commission and county commission, there's a way there's a way to fight that a little more than. Look at that. Very yeah, excellent Powerful, point. powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really is. And yep. I just want to put a uh, say to for those of you following us and we had a recent vote at our city council and we didn't put a Republican in for our mayor but Mayor Lucas is a somewhat conservative Democrat and he ended up being a tiebreaker and we got two ordinances passed which is a small victory okay but it is a victory so even though you may not always get what you want you know, if you just keep trying so Kudos to everything that you're saying. Yep, that it's, it, and we just need more people to listen to these radio shows, more people to listen to the city commissions and county commissions. And Thanks for the plug, yeah. you, you, it may be boring. You're not like a nerd like I am and just literally sit in every single meeting you can possibly sit in to learn. But you might sit in that meeting and find some point of that conversation that affects you and that gets you involved. And, and that's all it takes. If that's all you do is want to go in and fix the library, then then go in and learn how to serve on the board of the library or whatever. Find your niche because not one person can be on everything. Okay, so go listen, find your niche, whether it be the school board, or charter school, parks and recreation. You have no idea how many boards there are available to sit in in your community. And yeah, so that real quick, that's that's why it's just to remind everybody. That's why I think it's so important. Whether you're from Arizona, we do have a large Arizona audience. You're in Albuquerque, you're in Las Cruces, you're in Santa, wherever you are. It's so important to understand the the geopolitics and dynamics of your local community because that's more important than anything. It, it trickles from there basically. You go county by county before you know it, the state's purple, that's before right. you know it, the state's red. That's so right. this is super important. When I talk about that story in Alamogordo where they had to kind of get involved and then get things to where they want it to be. That can happen anywhere here in New Mexico. That can happen anywhere here in America. And to be honest, you need a strong leader. Amy's been a strong leader for Alamogordo and your county as a county commissioner, but now she's gonna be a leader for the state. I'm gonna try. You know, once we get you in there, so. <laughs> and then, yeah, so the local GOP here in New Mexico, Las Cruces, we do, we're getting a vote later this year and, and just get involved, guys. It, it sucks for me and I'm just kind of, you know, beating everybody up at this point. It's like, I'm always the youngest guy in there and it shouldn't be that way. There should be way more people that are my age. I'm in late 30s. I'm not like a young spring chicken, dude. I got grays all over the place. Like, we need to be getting involved. We need to be watching out for our kids' future. We need to be running for office. We need to be supporting candidates that do have the balls to run. Mm -hmm. And we need to be supporting Amy, someone like Amy, who's done the work for over 10 years, grassroots style, to get to a point where she can share that now with the entire state. So it's just very inspirational. And I hope people out there listening do get involved to some degree, anything, you know, just even just going to meetings. What happened to me is I started going to meetings, started listening, and I've listened to some on, the, on YouTube too, and it pisses me off. And that 
got me in. That got me in. So just, mm -hmm. just, just listen. Just listen. Before you know it, you're going to be out there running for office too. That's, That's it. why I love that you're here because you're the millennial and we are saying you need younger people. So you were going to say something, but after whatever you say, I want to ask you, what is the plan statewide to try to bring in the younger elements, people that, you know, like you said, you get tired of going to meetings and everybody there is 60 plus. I'm like 50, come on, let's get to the 50s at least, let's do that. You know, bringing in the youth is so difficult. Um, I wrote a uh, Young Republicans um, of every county kind of generic bylaws, thinking that we could target the high schools and really recruit people and give the kids opportunity that involve themselves into this to go to the session, to go even be flown to Congress and all that. If you're a part of this organization, do that. But then the problem came even in Alamogordo, oh no, you're political, you can't come into the school. I mean, that is the stop. And so you can't even hold an event at a, a school or a college if you are politically oriented. So that is, they've, they've pretty much shut that off. If you don't get it through the parents to get their involvement, then, then you don't. And so that, so then when you approach a young graduate or a young mom or whatever, and you say, hey, are you registered to vote? You know, and they're like, oh, you know, I know, I don't pay attention to that politics. That's, that's no good. It's like, okay. How much was the gas you put in your car today? Does that have anything to do with politics? You know, what about school? What are they teaching your kid? Do you, does that have anything to do with politics? And I don't want to make it seem like there's a right way and a left way to do all of this, but if you just look directly, just look July 1st, did your fuel tax, did your fuel go up? 50 cents a gallon, right? July 1st, how many people don't even know that? You just keep pumping and going right. on, people, right? I forgot, too. Yeah. How that many was voted people? in. Well, not voted in. It was pushed in. It was shoved it in. It was shoved down our throats. That's right. You know, how many people don't know that because you're not paying attention? So, I mean, the, the, the last week of June, I'm like, get ready. Your fuel's going up 50 cents a gallon, 50 cents a gallon. No pushback. Oh, you're full of it. You have no proof of that or whatever. That Because, you know... I eat, live, and dream about these sessions and watch it 24 hours a day. I know which bills which passed, you know, so tell me where you're getting your information. The news? Is, is that, you know? And that was something that was wonderful at the RNC, is, you know, how many people did you see on that stage that pointed out the fake news media? You know? Awesome. You know it was so great, you know? And I think um, it was uh, uh, Christy Lake. Carrie Lake, Carrie, Carrie Lake, Lake, that um, you know stood up there, and she literally. So you're, we were sitting on the floor, and she literally pointed at the which radio stations. Fake uh -huh. news, fake she news, knows. fake news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know because that's what our youth. They get up in the morning, they have the TV on, and that's what they're listening to. They don't do their own research, and that's what I loved about uh, Amber Rose. Her, she went to her dad she was one of the ones that spoke at the rnc she went to her dad and she said they got in a conversation about politics and he said she was calling trump a bully and that he's racist and all this kind of stuff and her dad said you know what i want you to go find the proof for me and bring it back if you can find the proof that the trump is a racist and that and then you please show me and i'll change my party and then she stood on that stage and she said, I wasn't able to find the proof. And my eyes were opened. And now I'm doing my own research. That's all I ask of people. Please, don't just sit there and turn on the news. Do your own research and, and figure out what are the lies and what isn't. The bigger problem with that is that most people aren't that reasonable and rational to do that. <laughs> and then, like, I just want to bring to light something that I kind of really just click with me. But Google is so powerful. You know, because people will see, a, a, obviously, a live talking point from MSM or whatever, and then they'll quick Google it, and either they just won't put it on the top of the feed, or they'll put some fake news article at the top, and you just quick read it, and it's, all right, that's truth, it's fact. That's exactly and right. And so the Google is way more powerful, and it skews more elections, and it brainwashes people more than we all give it credit. We all think it's a TV and Netflix, but Google and what they choose to put at the top of their feeds, I think, has a lot to do with, with people's perception. Even Facebook. Oh, I mean, yeah. look at Facebook and their feed. Um, our own county Republican page. You know, I could post something that's really good and look back in five minutes and it's buried deep. Dang. Like as if I posted it a week ago. 
you know, it has, so it's hard to get it to stay on the top and stay noticed and, and all that. And, and somebody like me that doesn't have the time to babysit and make sure that issue stays on top, it just gets buried and moved along. Do you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. Just last week, yeah. I posted, I wish I could remember what political story it was. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to post that again because it's like a different group or something. I'm, I got a zap and it said, hey, you're trying, like, something, it was really weird, like, you're trying to get too many likes on this. <laughs> it was worded very strangely. Thought, we're going to, you know, we're removing this post, and this is why it's for me. I thought, wow. I know. That's freaking me out. It and is. Yeah. And, and you already know, I mean, it's not like it's something new. It's, you know, to me, it's a digital badge of honor that they try to do that. It means I'm posting the right stuff. But, <laughs> right. It's, but, but, but it's not getting out there. It isn't. Right, right. But that's really just an indirect call to action and get involved with the local community again. Because right. if you just go to the committee meetings and you meet other people there, then you have your own little communication funnel that you're not dependent on social media, you're not dependent on Google to know what's going on in your community and to get things done. Once you get out of that realm and you're actually meeting with real people, things go pretty quick. Just people aren't out there. And it, you know, right. it's, just, it's what it is. Right. And you need know. for good resources too. Because once you, like, you know, right now, just getting to know Amy. Amy has been here for so long and involved in politics, you're going to be tired, you're going to be sorry, then because then <laughs> okay, I don't think Zeke can ask that, I'm going to call Amy instead. That's fine. But it's great, because then you know somebody, or they can tell you at least where to go find something you, can do, you want to do. Glenn Beck was notorious for always saying that. He would present, I always great, because never watch him on Fox News, remember, I, I miss, still miss his program they used to have. He had charts and all this stuff. But in the end, he always said, don't believe me. Do your own research. It's yes. more difficult to do, but that's the case. Do your own research. And don't just Google it. Right. I mean, don't just go to the first one. Like yeah, you I just want you to Google it. It's, it's brutal. Google's brutal. Facebook's brutal. You give me hope. You're a beacon of hope for New Mexico. Well, thank you. You know, I don't. Yes, you are. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I believe. I believe we can change it. I believe that we can, you know, bring New Mexico up from 51st to 50th. You <laughs> know, no, yes. no, give opportunity. You know, we have to have. Um, opportunity for entrepreneurship right now we don't even encourage that you know my daughter um, is uh, one of my daughters used to have a tattoo shop and the, the regulation of licensing she was the first graduate of the only college accredited school in New Mexico you think that you should get her her tattoo license like that right false it was the biggest fight most expensive fight of just trying to get a license that I think I've ever done Wow. And now, she has her license in Florida. I mean, that's where she's at. It's Dang. Just, I mean, See, it's driving them away. Yes. Restaurants. I want, I want my baby and grandbaby right here. And I want her to do what she wants to do here. But we have to fight the whole regulation part of it. And it's... it's we got to fight now, guys. Straight up, because I have friends that moved to Florida, and they're doing great. They're, yes. they're kicking ass. They're buying homes. They're buying nice cars. Their business is thriving. And they're, it's complete opposite of what they're experiencing. And they fought to stay here. The people that I know that move, they're like, man, we love it here. We love the weather. We love the food. But we, we can't survive here anymore. That's right. And so they bailed to Florida. And it's not about raising minimum wage. The businesses will handle the competition themselves. Right. It's not about regulating the businesses. The business will handle that themselves. For the market. That, that's right. To, to please the market, to make sure they're not destroying something. You don't want to be in a business known as dumping garbage in the river. I mean, this is not going to happen. You know, and all of these regulations and taxes and everything. And people don't even realize after uh, Trump wasn't president anymore, what? Just take a look at your pay stub, please. From a year ago, from, two, from four years ago to now, take a look at your pay stub and look at how much more payroll taxes are coming out of your pocket every single week. People don't even pay attention to that. You know? yeah. And not only that, how does it affect the businesses that are matching that? You know, right. it's 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 a double match. It's not just a match of Social Security or whatever. We are double matching to make sure we compensate. Money. That's right. You know, what? and that's what President Trump's all about: money back in your pocket. Money back in your pocket. That's that just made me think. One thing that I don't think is talked about enough is 2018 was like the best year in American history economically. I think right. That was the best year that we've had in America. And I, I had my business going at that time. Compared to 2018 to right now is like Twilight Zone, complete opposite. The attitude of everybody. Just all my business, most of them are gone now. Most of my friends that were, that were with me then and we're doing business together are gone. And so it's a crazy, like, back to the future style. That's my analogy in the back to the future when he goes in the future and Biff's running the city and everything's all jacked up. That's what it feels like right yes. now. And I don't think it's talked about enough, you know. 
It is not. And um, I was going to say something, and it just left my mind. But, <laughs> but it's a good um, analogy. It is. It is. But um, if people would just the, the the payroll taxes right mm -hmm. there, back in your pocket, that gives you the operating cash. And mm -hmm. if you look at, it hasn't been made public yet, but it's fixed to be made public. Trump's economic plan. Mm -hmm. You know, getting a just the whole taxation plan is going to be changing because he put all the numbers and all of the taxes that we paid into it really don't affect the United States at all. So he has a whole entire economic plan to change the entire tax structure and to get rid of the 88,000 IRS employees. That so we begin screwed on. forever. Oh, yes, yes, it is. That's you what know, you're saying. So it, it, it is that way. And um, um, I'm excited. I went to the FRW meeting a couple of months ago, and he had Trump's uh, economic advisor that was that was uh, presenting, and I was like, "Yeah, we need this. We need this in county level and city level and everything. The whole entire theory works for me." So um, hopefully that'll be made public here in the next month or two, and so people can see that. That's awesome. I'm so glad you mentioned the FRW because I don't do this enough. So I'm going to take two seconds and plug. I've I'm with Doniana County, Federated Republican Women. And women are organized, and we're getting very active. So I think Alan will go to somebody who's telling me Alan will go to get in the club right now. Well, they have one. They, they do have yes. one. Yes, right? okay. yes. So if you're somewhere, and, and it's another way, if you're a Republican woman, I mean, even guys, you know, we have associate members of you guys. And I think you're an associate member of our club, too. But that's another way to get active, and you can meet other women. You know, we meet like that. It is the third. Friday and we have lunch or something like that. But that's a great way to get active. Another another way. And you know, what I like about the FRW is it's inviting to young moms, you know, to come in and have lunch with you'll either have the same age group of women or some mentors or whatever and hear about the issues. And and that'll just get you involved. You know, Elizabeth Winterrow, it is so important. That we get her reelected. You mentioned her earlier. Oh, she, really she can win. Yes, but you know, and I know that she's strong with the, the FRW right now, and they're helping her out. Um, can you imagine if um, we had 20 young ladies out there door knocking for Elizabeth Winterrow right now? You know what the impact of that would be. So it, it's so important to get the FRW, and plus the timing. You know, people don't want to be really associated with the Republican Party, so maybe the FRW might be a little bit go. more forgiving. Yep. Um, and then the conservative coalition. I mean, there's so many other groups you can get involved in that we all want the same goals. And, right. you know, everybody wants to turn it in that we're fighting each other or competitive with each other. Of course I want more people to come to my meeting than yours. But you know what? It's all about getting the same thing done. We all want the same goals. So I want people to go to the FRW. I want them to go to the Southwest Coalition. I want them to come to the GOP meetings. I want so much more for an involvement. I want you all to be on the boards. Just know that. We talk about fixing your own backyard. If you're on the library board, if you're on an advisory board for the for your school, if you're on the PTA, if you're whatever you can be in, just get involved. If that is your passion, and make a difference. Yeah, talk to people. I, I think yes. that's so so right. And that's and thanks too because we always like to give a plug to the CCIA. That's Coalition of Conservatives in Action, which the majority of you probably are Republican. But they are conservative, but we have independents, and we also have Democrats that attend to. But as you say, what you're saying, Amy, is we have the same mission. We have the same mission to make things better. So if you can work together, great. Let's, let's do it. And we can work together. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody has this, this, this perception that we're fighting each other and, and all of that. But when you actually set us in a group in a, in a room to have a conversation, whether it be rules changes or whatever, we all get along and we all make a difference. And, and we hear, I hear what you're saying, I may not agree, and then I hear what you're saying, I may not agree, but after we talk about it, we can agree. And that's what it takes. Instead of all of this combative and arguing and, and what, what everybody thinks, you know, we're eating our own, Do we, we love to eat our own, you know, um, but we can work together more than we can not work together for sure. It's always more fun than media lets to show the fighting because that gets more headlines and more views. Since we're getting down to our last 10 minutes, I think Zeke wanted to take it to where because if you're going to be running for office, man, this is a lady I want to support right. as a committee <laughs> member. Yeah, if you could just speak to us about, you know, 
what you need from us to help you get in there? I mean, I don't know who's running against you. Do you have any opponents or anything? It's going to be. I have kind of, two you opponents. Got two? Yes. Okay, so we can't endorse you officially. And, and, and so, um, <laughs> yeah. And so, um, I, you know, I always teach my candidates not to say their opponents' names, so I'm not going to say their opponents. Names. Okay, cool. You, you gotta, you've got to learn them yourself. We'll find you know, out. Right we'll now, the out. name to know is Amy Barilla, okay, first state yeah. chair of the Republican Party in New Mexico. For me, it's going to be hard to beat Amy. <laughs> Whoever it is, it's going to be hard because you know. Yep. She's proven and, herself to me. And, you know, and I don't like dirty politics. Everybody likes to get into uh, uh, name calling and you did this when you were 10 years old and you did this when you were 15. I'm not that person. I'm going to state what I want done in the party, what I'm going to do, what I have done in the party, and I want to continue that momentum. And you either have seen what I'm doing or believe in what I'm doing and vote on me that way. I am not going to get into this attacking. When I ran in for county commission, I went to my opponent at that time too, and I said, I don't believe in dirty politics. So you run on your platform, and I'm going to run on mine, and that's it. And there's no reason for Republicans to eat their own, and I'm not going to start today. But... With that being said, with the Republican Party, I believe in grassroots. 100% in empowerment of the counties. And, and I've been doing that the last two years. Um, I've been training the counties. We are in a better place. I believe if we build the structure of New Mexico stronger, everybody knows what it takes to get somewhere, that's what it's going to take. And, and as chair, I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to be this person that, oh, no, I'm unreachable now. Um, I'm still me. I'm still going to answer my phone. And I'm still going to have the trainings, and I still want to make sure that every county has the stability that they need to be able to move forward. Our northern counties, I mean, they're to the point, they, it's, they have a hard time even recruiting Republicans to run. So do we. You know, yeah, in Las Cruces, absolutely. Yeah. Because when you're dominant, yeah, you'd have businesses over here in Las Cruces that don't want to uh, get involved because they'll lose business. You know, um, same thing. Um, we, we have... I don't know how to get out of that uh, bullying philosophy, but we've got to. Everybody has a right to stand up and make a difference. Whether you're the Republican Party or Democrat Party, there's no reason to, be, to bully anybody for having a different view. Let's work together instead. And I believe that with the party, external to the party, everything. I mean, that's what it takes for our session. We obviously know we've been outnumbered for 90 years here in New Mexico at, at our legislation. We're doing the same thing and we're getting the same results. But our Republican. 90 years, Amy? 90 years, maybe 90, oh. 91. It's about time point. for change. You know? Yes. You know? So, but what have our, our Republican leaders learned? You know, reaching across and working together. And look what was able to get done. The, the emergency session was shut down. You know, because of reaching across the aisle. And, and was our governor happy? No. Do I think our governor could have approached things different? Do we need crime reform? Absolutely. We are here with this crime problem because of the open border. She could have done things a little bit differently and maybe got a little more support, you know, rather than go in there gun ho for gun regulation. Because what are you doing when you're doing that? You're taking guns away from the legal citizens, not the illegal citizens that ha shouldn't have the gun in the first place. You know. When she goes around and, and talks about what she wants to do, she should have done that before the session. She should have done that to hear what the people wanted and then call for the session and say, hey, this is what New Mexicans want to fix crime. Not go in there with this hand of the gavel saying this is what's required. You know, and as the party, as chair, it's the oversight and the recognition and to try and take those kind of problems, make the public aware so that they can get involved. And I'm literally going to hold people's hands to get them involved, drag them into the room. You know, and I, and I challenge the county parties to hold these kind of meetings so that they gain interest. Like next, this month's meeting for Otero County, we're bringing in um, all of our uh, district judges and the judicial. Why? Crime. What is the judicial in Otero County, the 12th Judicial District, doing about it? You know, is that going to spark an interest? Every time you have a topic of that sort, maybe you're going to bring in a couple of new people. And they're going to listen, and then they're going to learn. This is a place where I can get information because I'm talking directly to you. I'm talking directly to you. I'm not reading the fake news newspaper or listening it to on the radio or anything like that. I, I'm, I'm getting it from the horse's mouth. And that's what we have to get people to understand. They need to get out of their house and out the couch and into these meetings and listen. Wow. Well,
awful. And so look, I mean, dang. <laughs> like I said, I could do two hours with uh, Miss Burrell, <laughs> Mrs. Burrell here. She's incredible. Might you got four minutes. We got about four minutes. <laughs> you know, and just thank you so much for coming on. This is a mm -hmm. huge honor. I think this is a very knowledgeable podcast. Too. I think people can listen to this wherever you are and learn a lot and actually start affecting your community now. Because like you said, we're electing local Republican chairs right now, uh, this year, at the end of the election. And we're going to be electing a new GOP chair here for New Mexico as well. So this is a very, very powerful time to get involved. If there ever was a time for you to get involved, the time is like right now. And, and that's where I'm at. I'm working my butt off helping uh, Mr. Kane with his yes. campaign. And it's, it's, it's a grind. It's brutal. But, Dan, we're making traction. And, Dan, things are looking good. And, Dan, we've networked. Not only am I helping him, but we're just bringing other Republicans together. And we're all like, hey, let's work together. And it's beautiful. And what you guys doing with this radio show, thank you so much. Because, you know, your reach and, and if you could just, if one person just changes or becomes aware because of this radio show, it's worth it. Thank you so much for saying that, for mm -hmm. acknowledging that. It's, it's yeah. what we're trying to do. And we, we need to have you back, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> quite well, a of, but you need to come back and keep us updated with what's happening. I'm encouraged now with the party, especially knowing that you are you're the first vice chairman. So yes. So you have a chairman and you're... She's pro-Trump. I'm a Trump. That's Alice's thing. Yes. That's yep. right. That's right. <laughs> I, 2024, am. Baby. I, I have to ask you real quick about that since you were there with the, the chairman. What is going to happen? Are we going to see a little bit more um, Trump support and things in the counties? What's going on? Oh, yeah. So um, I went, I did go to the RNC convention, but I was there for two weeks. And I was there for two weeks because the first week I was on the committees. And while I was sitting at the committees um, is when I learned that uh, New Mexico was purple. And all of a sudden, that makes the RNC's ears kind of perk up when they see those kind of uh, um, pull, the poll data that comes back for that. And so we were included in some, in some really good conversations with that. Now, initially, sure. before we were designated as purple, you know, New Mexico would have gotten forgotten. No doubt about it, because you know at that point we don't yeah, on the radar. Yeah, our you know our just our little you know electoral votes were not enough or whatever. But now that we are a swing state, we're going to get resources. We might even get some good speakers here in the future um, to have some rallies oh, in wow, the future. Okay. Um, oh, and right. so. Um, and, and that attention for New Mexico only benefits New Mexicans. So not as it does fund funding, it does for election integrity. They're already, uh, RNC already wrote us a check for the state party to uh, work on election integrity. And I am so Great. excited because election integrity is not about, um, I don't want to get into stealing the vote or anything like that. It is about oversight by the citizens and making sure that the people, the voters, feel comfortable that their vote is going to be counted and that it's not going so it's not anything to do everybody wants to say that it's a horrific experience and nothing but combative or whatever no we want to make sure that every vote is counted that every voter votes casted and and that when they walk in the room and they see people in there watching what's going on that they feel confident and they go and say hey I just voted you need to go vote too because the system works, and we have to make sure every vote. It's your right. It's your duty. Go vote. She's living sure. proof. She has a Republican local government in Alamogordo. You know, it's possible. You can get conservative people in office. That's a true Despite of election integrity. Right. The way you said it, yes. you it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So right. I'm all about building the, uh, right now. My number one focus until November is election integrity. I'm all about building the program up. The counties have been introduced to that, so be sure That's that right. you contact um, your chair, Henry Young. I think he's in the process of designating an election integrity coordinator, and um, we're just moving forward county to county, and it's going to be up to the people to make sure it gets done. Any I know it's so I'm sure you are welcome anytime to come back. Yeah. And if you just happen to be in the area and pop in and give us an update, that'd be great. Whenever yeah. you yeah. smaller. We'll build it up. We'll build it up. So that's it for today, guys. Tips and Stall Show New Mexico. The amazing. And also, you girls are amazing. You guys are amazing. And you're amazing, too. Yeah, well, thank you. we're here. We're fighting, guys. We're here for you guys. We're yeah. trying to improve our community and help everyone that's here with we're purple. us. We're purple. New Mexico is purple. We're freaking that's purple. That's headline out of this yeah. podcast. And it's an so, honor to sit here with you both. Thank you thank for having you. me. So yes, thank, thank you so you. much. But that's it for real quick prayer, guys. 
Thank you, Lord, so much for giving us the opportunity to sit here with Amy Varela and to promote her campaign and all the hard work that she's done. I pray that you continue to give us the strength and the wisdom to keep fighting for our community, Lord, in a peaceful way so we can, we can wake people up and we can build a, a generation of, of children and humanity from this point and beyond. Lord, thank you so much again for all the blessings. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Nice thank you. Okay, yes. Make it quick. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it was. Always quick. Thanks. Try to make it quick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Later, guys. <laughs>